edition of Airwaves, the Marine Corps demonstrates the power of the F-35B. Plus, a happy homecoming for the first Growler Squadron to be four deployed. And a look at the new robot that's stepping up productivity after dark. We're navigating the news of NAVAIR. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Prue. I'm Chief Caddis. Thanks for joining us. The Joint Strike Fighter is another step closer to being delivered to the fleet. The aircraft recently completed a successful round of tests using the Jet Blast Deflector. The JBD is a flight deck safety panel that acts as a barrier for engine exhaust. The tests collected temperature, pressure, and velocity data to determine if the current carrier systems is compatible with the F-35C. The Jet Blast Deflector, just like the catapults and the resting gear, is one of the most critical parts on the ship as far as all rays concerned, uh, aircraft launch recovery equipment. Uh, the JBD is there to protect everyone behind the uh, jet blast deflectors, whether that be aircraft or personnel. If we didn't have jet blast deflectors on the ship, you wouldn't be shooting aircraft off the ship. So the whole reason the JBD works is because it's water-cooled. Um, it, could, it could handle multiple cat shots without having to wait in between. Um, right now, it's about a 30-second wait between, between getting aircraft off deck and in the air. So. So that's what the water does for you. It gives you that, that repeatability. The single aircraft JBD testing will be repeated with an FAA team to collect the same data. Engineers will then develop a combined cooling model for the entire fleet. A new robot may prove that work doesn't need to stop at the end of the day. The weapons prototype division in China Lake is using a robotics machining cell to carry out simple production tasks. The robotic arm is designed to pick up raw material, load it into machine, and then remove the finished product. Engineers hope to leave the robot running unattended at night. The extended operating hours will increase productivity and save money. It allows us to create product off hours so when folks aren't here, that effectively increases our capacity uh, without, without the need uh, for additional personnel. And we're able to take this piece of raw material and create a finished part in half the time it used to take us using traditional manufacturing methods. The robotic arm will be incorporated into a conveyor belt system later this year. The F-35B offered up an impressive performance at its first media day. Marine Corps pilot Lieutenant Colonel Fred Shank demonstrated the aircraft's ability for short takeoffs and vertical landings. This capability allows the F-35B to operate on amphibious assault ships and on expeditionary airfields. Our simulation and our predictions are very good, but there's some things you just can't do until you actually uh, fly the airplane. And that's really you know, the great thing about what you know, NAVAIR does and Admiral Artizel with his folks and, and those professionals is you know, they put an aircraft through the paces so that when it is delivered to the fleet, uh, you know you're getting a superior product. Testing of the aircraft at Patuxent River is currently underway. It is one of three versions of the Joint Strike Fighter being built for the U.S. military. After seven years at China Lake, the Australian Royal Air Force has returned home. Since 2004, the RAAF has supported two aircraft assigned to the FAA team program. During this time, more than two dozen employees and their families lived and worked within the American community. Before leaving, the RAAF donated 17 computers to local schools. We looked at a lot of our assets, such as furniture, and how do we get rid of it? Uh, what do we do? Is it worth taking back to Australia? Uh, and we decided, in particular, the computer systems were four or five years old. Um, still valuable, but not valuable enough to put back into the system and reuse. Uh, and quite honestly, the first thing that came to mind was donating to local schools. The last F-A-18 aircraft departed China Lake in late June. It will continue to serve from its home base in Williamtown, Australia. Its mission accomplished for the first operational Growler Squadron to forward deploy. Following an eight-month deployment, the Scorpions touched down at Andrews Air Force Base before returning home to Whidbey Island. The squadron used five aircraft to fly more than 700 missions in support of Operation Odyssey Dawn and Operation New Dawn. Really an exciting accomplishment for the Navy and for our nation to have a growler uh, get to the fleet uh, on time, on cost, with performance uh, that was expected, and then seeing them actually using it today and actually being more successful than we expected. 
The EA-18G is the first newly designed electronic warfare aircraft produced in more than 35 years. Three expeditionary squadrons and ten carrier-based squadrons are scheduled to transition from the Prowler to the Growler by 2015. That's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.